you now, I know you do wonderful chimp calls. Well, I'm going to do the greeting. It's the kind of sound you'd hear if you went to Gombe and you climbed up onto the ridge in the morning. And if you're lucky, you hear the chimpanzee who's calling out saying, here I am, it's a wonderful day, where are you? And... Wow. And each one has his or her own individual voice, so you know exactly who's calling. Um, it's a pleasure to speak with you. Um, I wanted to know if you believe there are any undiscovered large ape species. You're talking about Yeti or Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Is that what he's talking about? Yes, yes, he is. <laughs> uh, pretty much. <laughs> I'm out of the loop. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, now, you'll be amazed when I tell you that I'm, I'm sure that they exist. I've talked to so many Native Americans who've all described the same sounds, two who've seen them. And there was a little tiny snippet in the newspaper just last week which says that British scientists have found what they believe to be a yeti hare and that the um, scientists in the Natural History Museum in London couldn't identify it as any known animal. Did you always <laughs> have this belief that they existed? Well, I'm a romantic, so I always wanted them to exist. <laughs> Animals were my passion from even before I could speak, apparently. Then when I was about 10, 11, I found the books about Tarzan of the apes. Fell in love with Tarzan. He's got that wife, Jane, you know, so I was terribly jealous of her. And that was when my dream started. When I grew up, I would go to Africa, live with animals and write books about them. That's how it all began. I got the opportunity when a school friend invited me to go and stay on their farm in Kenya. So, you know, I was 23 and I sort of said bye-bye to family, friends and country and off I went. And that was when I heard about the late Lewis Leakey. And somebody said, Jane, if you're interested in animals, you must meet Lewis. Lewis realized that I was the sort of person he said he'd been looking for for about 10 years, who didn't care about hairdressing and clothes and parties and boyfriends. You know, I really wanted to be in the wild. It took him a year. He searched for money and eventually found a wealthy American businessman. He said, OK, Lewis, here you are. Here's enough money for six months. We'll see how she does. The chimpanzees ran away as soon as they saw me. They'd not seen a white ape before. And I knew if that six months' money ran out before I'd seen something really exciting, everyone would, you know, I would have let Lewis down. Of course, at that time, we were defined as man the toolmaker. That was supposed to differentiate us more than anything else from the rest of the animal kingdom. And, and you discovered that the chimps could make tools. David Greybeard, bless his heart, I saw him crouched over a termite mound, the whole thing, putting in the grass, picking the termites off, picking a leafy twig and stripping off the leaves, which is the beginning of tool making. I couldn't actually believe it. I had to see it about four times before I let Lewis Leakey know. And then I sent a telegram, and he sent back his famous, ha-ha, now we must redefine man, redefine tool, or accept chimpanzees as humans. <laughs> After a bit, Lewis said, Jane, you have to get a degree because otherwise you can't get your own money and I won't always be around to get money for you. But he said, we don't have time to mess about with a BA, so you'll have to go straight for a PhD. So he managed to persuade Cambridge in England to accept me as a PhD student. And when I got there, it was actually a very unpleasant and hostile reception that I had. I shouldn't have named the chimps. It wasn't scientific. I didn't know. I mean, I knew nothing. And worst sin of all was that I was ascribing to them emotions like happiness, sadness, and so forth. And they were just aghast at you. Yeah, they were. Whippersnapper. Yeah, it was even accused of teaching the chimps how to fish for termites, which, I mean, that would have been such a brilliant coup. <laughs> Primatologists' gender influences how they conduct their work? Well, I think in many cases it, it actually does. Lewis Leakey always thought women were better as observers. He felt that they were more patient. Certainly, it's very often true that women tend to be a bit quieter and more prepared to sit there and let the animal tell you things. 
you rather be remembered for discovering the tool making abilities of the, of the chimps or for your work in, in the environment today? I think I'd like to be remembered as someone who really helped people to have a little humility and realize that we are part of the animal kingdom, not separated from it. When I do go back to Gombe, it's to be in that timeless world where it's soft and where life is entwined and you actually see the pattern of nature. And I always feel this great spiritual power, which I believe is, is around.